Good evening, Internet. Um, this is actually my second recording, so this is one of the reasons why it's so late. Um, my first recording went mostly okay. I messed up a little bit of it, but it ended up being a half an hour long. I'm pretty sure people wouldn't want to see that. I'll probably end up uploading the longer version later because I'm pretty sure it's better. Tonight's Vita, which is the last Vita for this is the last day of April. Hooray! Uh, tonight's Vita is in memory of my father, I guess you would say. I'm actually going to be covering one of his and my favorite game. Um, my father, as in the event that you haven't seen previous ones, my father passed away uh, either Thursday before last or Wednesday before last. We're not actually sure which day he actually died. Um, my father was responsible for me getting into PCs, getting into IT in general, and getting into computers. Um, before you ask, no, I'm not actually crying. I have something stuck in my eyes. Ah, probably cat hair. Um, so, yeah, he was involved with me in gaming from the very start. Um, apparently, my mother put me on his lap when I was a couple of weeks old while he was playing a video game, and I instantly shut up and stopped crying. Um, I've been a gamer ever since. <laughs> he is also the one that introduced me to several of the genres that I consider my favorite genres of gaming. Uh, for instance, he's the one that brought from his uh, from our neighbors. They thought it was awesome that they had it, that my father had a little kid that was playing games. So my neighbors brought my father, and my father gave to me some of the video games that he liked. Um, my neighbors happen to have worked for a game company called Origin. Um, no, it's not EA's crappy download service. Origin was the makers of the Ultima series of games. Yeah, so my first RPG was Ultima 4, followed by Ultima 5 and Auto Duel. Auto Duel is a video game version of the pen and paper game Car Wars by Steve Jackson. Um, Look it up if you wish. It's not that important. He later on introduced me to turn-based strategy games with the game Civilization, and eventually even to um, ah itchy nose. Uh, he eventually even turned me on to strategy RPGs. Um, the very first, I guess you would say, more modern RPG, in other words, RPG that I knew what an RPG was that I played was Shining Force 2. Uh, my father bought it for me. We were at Toys R Us looking for video games. He happened to spot that one on sale and went, this looks like a game we would enjoy. Um, turns out Shining Force 2 was one of our favorite games for quite some time. I would come home on the weekend because I lived with my mother over the course of the week and my father on the weekends. I would come home on the weekend and notice that my party was substantially higher level than when I had left, because my father loved grinding. Uh, he would grind the same battles over and over and over again. He would also show me his progress in Civilization. Uh, he loved playing Civ 1 and Civ 2 in Alpha Centauri, which I'm going to be showing you Alpha Centauri today. Um, he was substantially better than I was, at least to start. Uh, Civilization 1, back after I had figured out at least the mechanics behind the game, I used to just like reading the instruction manual and reading the Cephalopedia and not actually playing the game. Mostly because I would die a painful, horrible death in the game. Um, eventually I started being able to beat the very early on levels, you know, um, Warlord level at best. And even then that was a struggle, typically. Um, my father would have games on Emperor level and would be generally winning. I had loaded up one of his games at one point back when I was still kind of young and I remember being horrified by the game because at that point I had never actually had a game that went to the end time-wise. Uh, he was stuck in a three-way nuclear war. Yeah, not the infamous nuclear war of Civ 2 that never ended. It wasn't one of those, but it was just... Uh, I did not understand his way of playing at all. Uh, eventually I got better at Civ 1, and eventually started playing Civ 2, where I got substantially better to the point where I was eventually slightly better than him at Civ 2. By the time I stopped playing Civ 2, I was regularly winning on Emperor difficulty, and my father was typically one below that. Uh, was that Monarch? I get my difficulties mixed up with the Civs because I've played all of them. Um, around the time that I started getting decently good at Civ 2 is when my father bought Alpha Centauri. Uh, Alpha Centauri was 
It was another game by Sid Meier, Sid Meier being the creator of the Civilization series. Well, I should say, another game by Sid Meier and Brian Reynolds. Um, they both collaborated and made Civilization 2 and Alpha Centauri, plus expansions to both of those games. Um, Firaxis, the game company that Sid spun off of Microprose, who was the original developers, be or original publishers behind Civ, um, didn't have the rights to Civilization. Uh, Microprose, Microprose still held those, so they needed to use a new IP, new intellectual property. They decided to make a more futuristic version. Um, the traditional way that you beat Civilization outside of conquering the world is by sending a ship to the planet, or one of the planets in the Alpha Centauri system. Uh, that was the science victory of the game. And, well, Alpha, the game Alpha Centauri, I'm just going to abbreviate it as SMAC. SMAC stands for Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. Uh, SMAC starts where Civ leaves off, basically. Uh, you have a ship that's heading toward one of the planets of Alpha Centauri, the planet of Chiron. Um, there's an accident that happens on the ship. The captain's killed. Uh, the books actually or not the books, the mini-series of short stories actually explain what happened. It wasn't an accident. Um, and the remaining people on the ship, which were members of the United Nations at one point, started arguing. They split up into seven factions and landed on the planet to go about their own business. And that's the basis behind Alpha Centauri, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and switch to at this point. Um, Alpha Centauri is unique. This is actually the Alien Crossfire. This is the expansion of Alpha Centauri, but same game in this case. Um, Alpha Centauri is very unique in the fact that it is the only civilization type game with a plot. And not just any plot, an extremely good plot. I mean, the plot of Civ 1 and Civ 2 was basically you are the head of a civilization, don't get wiped out. That was it. In this case, well, I just described to you more of a plot than any of the other Civilization games, and this entire game has a lot, a lot of plot in it. Um, while I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and set up the game or something like that. So, um, the longest time, I was not very good at Civ, or at Smack. Um, I would play on Citizen difficulty level and lose. Turns out I figured out that I was just very bad at particular AI strategy, which was Zerg Rush from StarCraft. Uh, there's one of the factions, which I'll go over the factions in a moment, that has tendencies towards Zerg Rushing. I would lose perpetually from that. I eventually figured out ways of dealing with that faction, and I was able to move on to Specialist Difficulty. Um, both Citizen and Specialist Difficulties are the cheat uh, cheating in your favor difficulties, which is to say that the game gives you bonuses that you wouldn't normally have. Uh, citizen difficulty, it even ignores rules completely rather than just toning them down. Um, eventually, after about a year, I was doing decent at specialist difficulty, and I came across an idea. An idea that my father partially gave me after him watching me play. What we used to do is that we used to sit next to each other, so I would have a chair right here. I would be sitting back there either reading instruction manuals, reading maps, making maps, things like that while my father would play, or vice versa. And my father was watching me play on specialist level and giving me a couple of ideas as to what I could do instead. Um, the ideas sounded interesting. I adapted them, changed them a little bit, and I decided to start playing on talent level. <coughs> Talent is difficult. Talent is the level that everything's equal. Um, there's no penalties for you playing at higher difficulty, like there are at higher difficulties. The AI is not cheating or anything like that. At the same time, though, the game's not helping you. Um, it's definitely not doing you any favors, that's for sure. Um, again, Smack is actually a really difficult game. I came off of playing at the highest difficulty of Civ 2, and Smack is very similar to Civ 2. Yeah, uh, funny thing, I decided to adapt one of those strategies slightly differently, and I started doing extremely well at talent, like blowing away everything during the early game, and I decided, you know what, let's see how well this works when I play on Transcend. So Transcend is the difficulty I primarily play on, I'm actually extremely good at the game at this point. I There's only a single faction that I can't actually play at Transcend level, and win every time, practically blindfolded. Um, 
uh, as I was saying, transcend is the level that the AI cheats a lot. Um, in Civilization games, the highest level is typically the level that the AI is a dirty, rotten cheater. In Civilization 1, it would get free wonders. Um, in Smack, it basically has huge bonuses to every possible thing, and you have huge penalties to everything. Um, it's even possible to start having unhappy people the moment you have anybody sit on a planet. It's really difficult, and that probably makes no sense to anyone that's not playing a Civ game at some point in their lives. Um, one of the things that I liked about Smack quite a bit was the fact that I had customized game worlds. I can decide not just uh, what I was going through was a custom game world where I was changing, you know, water content on the planet, how big the planet is, stuff like that. I can even change some of the rules of the planet. I can make the world map completely invisible or partially visible as it is by default. I can make it where you actually start the game a few years out rather than immediately. Um, I can make the game where research takes longer, I can randomize things where I don't have to worry about Miriam perpetually. Uh, there's a lot of things that I can do with the game. Um, this tends to be the rules that I use. Um, I believe these are the defaults. I hate blind research. It allowed me to start fiddling around with things. It allowed me to start figuring out how the game worked, how it ticked. And that's actually what Alpha Centauri taught me, was how to manipulate AIs. So, I'm gonna switch so you can read that. Um, one of the weird parts of Alpha Centauri is the fact that it has plot. I already mentioned something that where it had a lot more plot than pretty much any Civ game. Uh, you have characters. These are the factions that you play. In Civilization games, there's not really any different. In the early ones, at least, there's no difference between them. There's color, and that's about it. If you wanted to play Babylon versus the Zulus, your leader looked different, and that was about it. In this game, on the other hand, not only do you have different attributes, um, for instance, the Spartans have plus two morale, plus one police, minus one industry. Um, Guy's stepdaughters have plus one to the planet, plus two efficiency, minus one morale, minus one police. They get extra nutrients and fungus squares, and they have a penalty where they can't use freem. Uh, they can't use wealth. <coughs> not only are there differences in that regard, not only do you start with different technologies, Doctor and Mobility versus Centauri Ecology, the characters themselves are different. I mean, Superior for one, they're voiced. Taken together. Together. Um, together. Um, the game actually gives you background. It, as you develop technology, you get quotes from each of them. Um, the quotes start making, painting a picture of what these people are, and they're not just stereotypes. Um, for an example, this is the perfect example, the humanitarian, the peace, UN peacekeeping forces, um, the people that just want everyone to get along. Um, Robin Law sounds like the stereotypical good guy, and for a good chunk of the game, he's... No, no, he's not actually a good guy for pretty much any part of the game. Um, they frequently paint him as the sniveling bureaucrat that just commissions UN things. Um, he perpetually demands UN sanctions if you anger him, regardless of the fact that there's no UN anymore. And he's also really creepy in the way he handled his Chosen. Um, there's a quote later on in the game that says, well, you can hear his voice. As the Americans learned so painfully in Earth's final century, um, his voice sounds like he's giving speeches almost all of the time. Um, one quote doesn't have him doing that. It actually has him very introspective. He says something to the extent of, I loved my Chosen. How then to prepare for the day that she left me? So I kept from her a single hair, so I can love her again. Um, his idea of dealing with death was by cloning his beloved wife over and over and over again. That's not creepy at all. Um, yeah, in fact, even in the books, it's ridiculously creepy. Um, each of these characters have both good sides and bad sides. Um, the closest thing that this game gets to a straw man, which would be Miriam of the Lord's Believers, um, they're the fundamentalist, um, Bible-thumping people, I do mean literal Bible-thumpers, they will thump you over the head with a Bible as they kill you because they're one of the warrior races. Um, even the most closest thing this game has to a straw man has a point. She has a lot of really good quotes that make you think. 
that's the whole part of the reason why I love this game so much, is that it's not black and white. There is no good and evil. It is a very complicated world, as you would expect this to be. Um, the Gaia's stepdaughters, the tree huggers, they murdered an entire city worth of innocent people as a spy test of using native life forms that make you go completely and utterly insane mentally and just scream in your mind perpetually until you just kill yourself. I am not exaggerating this. Um, the Human Hive, um, they are listed, uh, the, um, Shinji Yang is listed as the despot, but the Human Hive, not only is it a brutal dictatorship, it's led by a Buddhist, uh, who has very philosophical quotes, and, yeah, um, Morgan Industries, um, this is probably the closest thing there is to a not-evil guy. He still tries to take over the world by cornering the energy market. In other words, giving the entire planet a power outage in order to give pe make people give him more money because he has a monopoly over all of it. Yeah. These aren't nice people. No one on planet is nice. Sometimes they do nice things. Sometimes. Um... How long have I been going? I have been going for 16 minutes. I am going to stop this here. At some point, I will actually. Well, I'll just Human go ahead and pick one. Morgan's the faction I can't play very well, by the way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this after this loads up. This is what Alpha Centauri generally looks like. Um, well, usually. You see the little line here? It kind of looks like this got cut off. This is actually the window of. Well, easy way to show you. Um, that little screen in the middle is actually what the game looks like. Um, it's normally 1024 by 768 resolution. I like running it at a much higher resolution, which has some glitches and was never meant to do that. Meh, that's the, that's the game's problem, not mine. Um, yeah, at some point I'll probably go through the game, but I don't want another half an hour episode. Let me know what you think. Um, this is my last Vita. I don't know when the next time I'm going to produce one. I thought about it, and I'm not going to make one tomorrow. I may, I'll probably make one this weekend, and the one this weekend is probably going to be showing you my new house. Um, please leave comments below. I mostly made this because I miss my father. I talk to him about games quite a bit, especially this game. I owe him quite a bit. Thanks, Dad. Enjoy, Internet.